Fire Emblem. Engage. Hello, everyone. This is Access. Welcome to Chapter Six of this Fire Emblem Engage Anything Goes Maddening LTC. I'm not able to find Cap in this fog of war, so I'll be solo commentating again. Before this chapter, we gain access to the arena, which is very useful for XP and bound levels. We gave all three standard arena to Alir and rushed her to bound level 10 with Mars to use Mercurius for double XP. Sailing trained with Sigurd to inherit Cantor, which is only needed for this two-turn clear. Chloe also inherits Cantor in advance to get more experience here. These investments are affordable thanks to 3,000 SP books from the DLC. In the battle prep, we gave Sigurd to Vander and Selica to Sailing, effectively switching their roles from the previous chapter. Alir got back with her boyfriend while Chloe settled with Merrick. We forged Killer Axe plus 2 for Vander, Mars engraved Fire plus 1 for Sailing, and Sigurd engraved Javelin plus 1 for Chloe. Sailing uses Magic Tonic and keeps a torch in her inventory. And most importantly, Chloe uses the DLC boots to have one more move. We will not get another pair of boots until Chapter 14, so this is a big decision. But we're confident that Chloe will help us realize many fairy tales. Let's get into the clear. Yunaka first chips the thief who stole the Micaiah ring. Then Alir engages and takes the kill with Mercurius. We'll see that thanks to Mercurius, Alir gets 40 experience from this kill which is amazing. Getting more kills with Mercurius will be one of the main ways to power level Alir and Chloe to level 10 for promotion. We get to maneuver our remaining units down below after the Micaiah cutscene. Because this is a fog of war map, we can normally only see and move to places that are within 3 tiles from allies or beacons. But Sailing makes herself a super beacon by using the torch to light up 7 tiles around her. Alfred chips the reveal sword fighter with silver lance, setting up the kill for Chloe who canters 2 left after combat. Vendor then engages with Sigurd, chips the bottom thief here with hand axe and canters toward the boss. This thief will move early in enemy phase and suicide to Chloe. The rest of our units head toward the droppable the items. The stewards move up to counter the hammer guy while Louis stands by and watches them. Yeah. The workout flunkies move left toward the hidden longbow archer as they plan to train some accuracy in their push-ups. Two things need to happen in this enemy phase. First, Chloe dodges an axe fighter hidden in a thicket above. She gets 4 experience from countering the axe fighter and 16 more from killing the wounded thief. Second, Vander needs to dodge at least one of the many attacks and chain attacks on him. The situation here is dicier than in the previous chapter since Vander can die here if unlucky. But it's pretty likely that he will still stand and remain in battle. Near our starting positions, Louis actually doesn't just stand by, but baits the hammer guy to attack him with the effective weapon. But with Fram in sight, Louis feels very safe. Earlier, Boucheron was also able to make his big build a salient target for the longbow archer. In turn 2, Sadie engages with Seneca and warp Ragnaroks onto the axe fighter above Vander. If Vander missed this guy earlier, Chloe would need to deal the finishing blow after Sailing. Sailing canters one left and one up, which reveals the boss thanks to her torch and also enters the boss attack range. With the boss in sight, Vander forgets about his severe injury and rushes forward for his honor. He risks his life in an attempt to crit kill Tyrande's first HP bar, only to miss. At least Vander survives. That was really close. Fortunately, we can let Vender try again after Atia uses her bow to wiggle some arrows. This time Vender succeeds. He crits the boss and actually gets a non-trivial amount of experience for the first time in this run. I think at this pace, we might be able to see his amazing first level up. The remaining HP bar of the boss will be handled by sailing in enemy phase, so we take our time to do some side quests before that. Chloe gets another kill on the mage. 
Saint Clair and Louis tried to get themselves injured, but only with partial success. Just thinking about doing this for Yunaka's benefit, Louis becomes invincible. Boucheron shows the archer that he's the strongest man on this land, so he deserves the longbow. And while Alfred could kill the axe fighter for his hammer, he dislikes combat so much that he doesn't even bother. Flower Prince already regrets that sword fighter kill in the ring vault, tainting his wreaths and battle records. Up above, Yunaka engages with Mikaya and performs a great sacrifice. Unfortunately, it's not the greatest sacrifice, since some allies fail to make themselves injured. But we don't expect Yunaka experience to matter, do we? To conclude the actions, Alir gets another Mercurius kill and almost reaches level 6. Sailing crits Toronda's second and last HP bar at 4% chance, finishing the clear and netting her first level up. It's nice to see that she stays positive even after gaining basically no stats. We fish up a talisman from Taronda's corpse, and that is chapter 6 cleared in 2 turns as well. See you next time!